Hello and welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, your guide for everything you should realistically care about this week. You just heard The Wildlife from Vacationer, and that's off their upcoming full-length album called Relief, which will be coming out just in time for the summer, and just in time for you to play that in your car with the windows rolled down. My name is Chris, and I'm here, as always, with Grimes. Yes. And we have a special guest here right off the top of the program. His name is Deke Bosco. He is a senior at Edinburgh University in the Communication Studies program. He also has a minor in German, or he's pursuing his minor in German. He is a writer, director, actor, producer, author, and crazy person extraordinaire. He is the author of The Woman's Guide to Dating by a Jaded Man, as well as Norseman Who Rode. And he is here to give us a nice little interview about his writing. And uh, John, why don't you take it from here? All right, Deke, how are you, sir? I'm doing all right. This is my first radio interview, so this is pretty exciting for me. Yeah, maybe well, I'll, maybe I'll get like two extra Twitter followers after this. Yeah, maybe. I think uh, you know we've made several people famous. So, <laughs> but in any case, excuse me. Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to have you in. I know you're an author, and uh, you're making movies. You're doing a lot of creative ventures, um, along with going to class and being a world-class soccer player. Oh, right. But um, let's get into it. So for anybody who's curious, Deke is a self-published author, and uh, we're going to start by talking about The Women's Guide to Dating by a Jaded Man. This, uh, all of these books are available on lulu.com uh, if you just search Deke Bosco. That's a B-O-S-K-O. Right. Deke, how it sounds, two E's. B-O-S-K-O on lulu.com, so search that out. So, how did this book come to be a thing? Well, it actually started out as a final assignment for one of my classes. It was just a, um, a narrative, I think, and I decided I should just go over these uh, crazy dates that I've had over the years. And by crazy, I mean they were so psychotic, I think they should have like went to jail after this. <laughs> And so, like, describe some of the moments in the book. Like, for example, a first going to a strip club on a first date. Uh, oh, my God. Um, well, it was a blind date, first of all. Okay. And I was working at this casino in Oklahoma at the time, and one of the barmaids um, told me, hey, I know this one girl who's just recently single, and she would love to meet you. I'm like, all right, fine. That'd be cool. And then... She told me where to meet her, which was the local strip club, and I'm like, uh, can we go somewhere else? Like where? I don't know. How about a bar or a 24-hour restaurant? <laughs> right. Anywhere. <laughs> really anywhere, yeah. And so did you go? Yes, we went. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and what I explained in the book, other than the fact that it was at a strip club, was that it was kind of hard to talk to her because of the loud music and sure. distractions. Not a great environment for any date, really, especially a first blind date. It's like trying to have a first date in a raging dance club, right? but with naked people walking around. Pretty much. So. I mean, she was a nice girl. It was just the wrong venue. Yeah. Uh, could you think of any other examples? Well, um, also listed in the in the book, which is after the first date, um, I've actually had women just go off the deep end. Like, they would post their problems with me on Facebook or something, and I actually had a protest against me the next day. Wow. <laughs> I was walking to class, and then people were telling me how bad of a person I was. Oh, man. Just because she blocked me on every social media and decided to just make me look like a terrible person and I got wow. a bunch of emails saying how bad of a person I was and then even a group <laughs> came up to me and started shouting at me like I was being mass protest or something. And this took place uh, in Oklahoma also? Uh, yes. <clears throat> and this was Northeastern Oklahoma University, correct? Uh, Northeast Oklahoma A&M. A&M, okay. Junior Which is college. Which is also the setting of a very interesting project of yours that I think is very cool and I'm going to check out. The Norseman Who Rode. Now this is a gonzo journal about you ousting a college administration. Yeah. What's the story here? Oh, man. Um, I mean, well, short version. Okay, well, short. <laughs> <laughs> if you can. Well, long version, I'd suggest you buy the book. Exactly. But, uh, short version. Lulu.com. Yeah, Lulu.com. Um well, what happened was, it started as 
I started out in summer school in 2007. I was living on campus, and a flood, a huge flood, hit the campus, and it um, basically made a lot of people homeless, and there was a lot of chaos that ensued, and a lot of damage done, too. But with lack of prior planning for this flood, uh, we had to come back, like, within a week after it hit to go back to class. Right. And also, like, the cleanup crews were stealing people's stuff out of their apartments, myself included. Like, I was missing a few PlayStation games. Wow. And... Most of the money, I suspected, went to the college president because he was getting a new paint job on his mansion. I think he got a new car. He got a new lawn rolled in, new flower garden. And I he just was kinda... flaunting a bunch of money right after a disaster. Exactly. So I went to the press. I actually um, was contacted by a reporter from the Tulsa World, and I did an interview, and then all media hell broke loose after after that interview, like, all the affiliates of NBC, CBS, Fox, like, the local stations, right. all went to the campus. They didn't get any answers from the department, but they got a lot of information from the students, and because of that, enrollment dropped drastically, like, 30%, I think. Wow. And then, so what happened to those administrators? Uh, they stayed on, they stayed on their jobs, because I guess they couldn't find anything, quote-unquote, and I mean, even though um, their enrollment dropped and there was still massive damage to the campus even after summer school like they just gutted out the place and just put a spread of paint on it and called it good basically Wow. well so The Norseman Who Rode how did you come up with that title What's the, and there's a story associated with this yes um, during the peak of the flood this one guy um, was going to be fired from his job if he didn't get his work uniform and it was in the apartment which is second floor that was not touched by the flood water first floor were first first floor was proper english and um he literally rode to his apartment to get his work uniform and whenever he came out the police were there to meet him and you were not allowed to trespass or else you'd get arrested. And wow. that's, that's what happened. He got arrested. He had to return his work <laughs> uniform, and then he spent three nights in jail. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> well, I don't know. what uh, the, the last book here to talk about, we got a, a little couple minutes left here. Um, Deke Bosco presents Fairy Tales for Adults. What do you want to say about this book? It's a collection of uh, fairy tales that you've modernized. Yeah. And it also has, like, a lot of adult themes, and most of the titles aren't really appropriate for radio. But. <laughs> okay. Well, I know the night before finals, you posted that around Christmas on Facebook, didn't you? I did, it's yes. Kind of like, based off the night before Christmas. And there's that an audio fire, file. Well, I made the audio and then posted it on YouTube. Cool. Hmm. All right, and where can people go to find all your stuff? I mean, is it best for YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, what... Where would you send people if they want to get do you well, have a website with all of it? I do not have a website. I do have a Facebook page, at okay. Deke Bosco, and my Twitter is at Deke Bosco. Okay. And I also have YouTube as well, and I have a lot of other videos that are unrelated to my books. Right, like the movie you're making about your own life? Well, that's just a pseudo-trailer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not so gonna... that's not going to happen as a project? No, no. Oh. I, I, I was kind of hoping it would. <laughs> But anyway, all right, so, and what is your, um, oh, jeez, I just drew a blank, I'm sorry. <laughs> what about um, your weekly writings on Facebook? Oh, yeah. You want yeah. to explain those real quick? Well, my weekly 15 beliefs I've been doing for a long time, like almost a decade, actually. Wow. Hmm. And they're just random thoughts that I come up with. Like, I would jot them down during the week, and I'm like, this would be really cool to tell people on Monday. <laughs> cool. And cool. and also weird news stories and pop culture stuff. So Great. Cool, cool. Well, thanks for coming in, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much, and um, hope to have you back sometime. Well, whenever you guys want me back, I'll come back. <laughs> thanks cool. for having me. Sure. Uh, no problem. Okay, we got some tunes coming up from the 100 Acre Wood, a band out of Philadelphia and Los Campesinos. So stick around. This has been The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly on WFSE 88.9 Fighting Scots Radio.